All right, we're gonna tie a quick version of Scott Howell's Squidro for trout. It's gonna be basically half of a Squidro. Gonna use some familiar items here. In the vise, I've got a Waddington 25 millimeter shank. Senyo's intruder wire for size six hooks or larger. Some owner side drifting hooks in size four. Our first material, we're gonna go with some, most of the body is gonna be Angora goat in different colors. We're gonna go with some yellow to start. And we'll get off a little pinch of this. Just a little pinch of Angora. And I like to kind of pull it apart and line up all the fibers. Get a dubbing loop set here. This will be kind of the rear of the fly. Most of this body is going to stand up nice and make for a, a nice prop for rubber legs and material towards the end of the fly. We're going to go ahead and pinch, spin. And for this fly, for the Angora Goat, I will pick it out a little bit, help it stand up. That stands up nicely and we'll pull it back and wrap it. Pretty tight turns. Angora adds a lot of body to a fly without a whole lot of material. So it's one of my favorite, favorite materials to tie with. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and lock that in. And we'll trim it off. Next we'll use about the same amount of orange Angora goat. We'll go maybe just a little bit more. And once again we'll pick it apart and lengthen out those fibers. set that down and create another dubbing loop. We'll advance our thread forward a little bit, maybe about a quarter of an inch. Then we'll place this full length of Angora into that loop. We'll go ahead and pinch and spin. And we'll pick that out. And I randomly <clears throat> started using a golf club cleaning tool as a dubbing brush, but it actually works well. This wire end does a pretty good job of getting the fine materials out. So I'll alternate between those two. We'll do the same thing. We'll go ahead and wrap this tight, but also advancing forward. And with this Angora, you can use any color combo you like. The browns, the yellows, the oranges. Those are the ones I really like for trout here in Alaska. And we'll lock that in. You can see that kind of almost like a sunburst kind of color to it. Next, we'll take some rubber legs and my favorite ones are these Wapsi Silly Legs in pumpkin green and orange. And we're going to go with two at a time so I'll cut off two at a time here. And we're basically going to in total put eight legs around this fly but what we're going to do is take the very tips and we're actually going to tie these forward so I'll move my thread a little bit forward, put those butts right up against that last bit of uh, Angora we tied in. 
So these two are on the, the side of the fly going forward, basically on the top. And we'll, we'll basically make a couple wraps and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Or what you can also do is double these back. Same thing, tie them right in on the top. Just grab those tips, line them up. Tie them kind of on the top and slightly on the side. Once you get those tips lined up, butt them right up against that. Angora that we tied in, that second piece, kind of pinch them on top and a few wraps will hold these. We're kind of on the top and just slightly to the side. And we'll end up cutting those off here shortly. Now we're going to rotate the fly to the underside. Same thing, we'll grab two legs. Grab two legs here which of course eventually becomes four. We'll do the same thing, two on, we'll butt those butts together of the rubber legs, tie them right up against that angora, a couple, couple wraps to secure them. And so those are kind of on the bottom towards me, those two are. So we'll actually grab those legs, butt them up, kind of on the bottom towards the camera, butt them right up against that angora, a couple wraps and we're good. So now we've got legs tied all the way around the fly forward. We're just gonna grab the butts of these legs and wrap all the way back to where that angora was. We'll rotate our fly and we'll try to cover those butts up as much as we can. If not, it's totally fine. So we'll leave these legs forward they shouldn't get in the way, but if they do, you can always wrangle them with, with some pipe cleaners. Just kind of lock them in there. We'll go one last little bit of Angora Goat. This one's going to be a little bit more of a brown color, but kind of a rusty brown. Good pinch of this stuff. The goal of this is to cover up those legs. We'll do the same kind of thing here. Lengthen these. Get those all situated. And then we'll make a dubbing loop. And we'll advance this thread just behind where those rubber legs are tied in. We want to make sure that we don't tie over top of those legs. We want them to freely be able to fold back over the fly. So we've got that rusty brown in that loop. We're going to give it a pinch and a spin. Let that spin out. And we're going to want to pick this out again. You can see how not a lot of material that we've been putting in, but it does prop real nice and it actually moves nicely in the water. So it's probably one of the best underbody or head materials I, you know, I like to use for a lot of my trout spay flies. So we'll pick this out, get it fluffed up, and then we'll fold back and tie forward. Covering up the butts of those rubber legs here. All right. So we'll tie that rusty brown in. We want to make sure that we're tying more towards the hair than we are those rubber legs. We really don't want to mess with those rubber legs too much. Lock that in. Snip that off. Now what we'll do is we'll actually all these curled ends. We can go ahead and just snip and separate those legs. So now we've got eight rubber legs. And now is where we'll pull all of those back. Grab a pipe cleaner, pull all these legs back. And just kind of secure that back. And you can either finish this with a, you know, some kind of hackle of your choice. You can add weight at this point, dumbbell eyes, bead chain. Um, but I'm going to add just a little bit of piece of marabou, real short marabou. This is some of that pheasant stuff I've been using a lot of, just kind of a hybrid feather. We'll get that 
tip ready and tie it in. Really tie that tip in and pop it out of there. But I like to really make sure it's secure. And then we can fold this marabou back and three or so turns of this. You can use full-fledged marabou, but I wouldn't use a whole lot. You know, just a wispy amount on the front of this fly. So this is kind of like a, a shorter marabou. And we'll go ahead and lock that down. Fold everything back and tie right up tight against that stem and we'll clip that stem out. And now I really like to wet everything down, make sure I get that stem nice and close. And then form my head. And we'll go ahead and whip finish here. Two whip finishes. And then we'll pull those rubber legs out and give you an idea what this fly looks like. And you can finish that with your favorite cement of choice. Looking good. We'll go ahead and pick this out with our brush. Get that nice, nice and flared out. You can see that cool sunburst kind of look on that underbody, that orange and yellow. what the half squidro looks like. Like I said, this is kind of kind of copied from Scott Howell's steelhead pattern, the squidro, and uh, it's gonna have a lot of great motion with those rubber legs and that underbody with the, those hot spots and color. Just a great profile, real easy to tie, lightweight materials, easy to cast. It's a fun one for trout. Thanks for watching.